Welcome to a brand new series from DNA Baits. Before I joined the media team at the company, I used to film my angling exploits, whether it be on the syndicates, day tickets. I also made a number of films over in France. So Vinny's vlog is coming back, but this time it's coming back slightly different. Being a videographer in this industry sees you go to a whole host of different types of carp venues, whether it be shooting angling films or doing product stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go behind the scenes a little bit, give you guys a little bit of an insight on how these carp films that we all love to watch, how they're made. I'm going to show the highs and the lows. Sometimes we turn up to a shoot and everything goes according to plan. The boys catch big fish and we get a real good film out of it. On the other hand of the spectrum, we do have disasters, we have torrential wind, torrential rain, fish not playing, camera breakdowns and everything in between. You won't believe some of the shenanigans that happens when we're out trying to make the films that we all love to watch. So I'm really looking forward to doing this, going a little bit behind the scenes and give you guys a real insight on how these angling films are made. I'll also have the camera with me during my own fishing. I've got quite a lot of exciting stuff planned for the rest of the year. So we'll kick things off. We'll go back to the start of April. Me and my good mate Bonesy, Tracker Supremo, and also a DNA user. We went across the channel into France. We went to a place called the Zoo, which is an amazing venue, I have to say. Unfortunately, the weather was a little bit against us. It was an early trip. We knew it was going to be a bit risky, but we had minus two most nights. So. Yeah, a little bit of a tricky one, but we did manage to winkle a few fish out. So we'll have a look at some clips from that trip now. So Bones and I landed at the zoo and uh, yeah, we had a good walk around as you do on these type of trips anyway. So the whole group had a walk around the lake and yeah, it's about 45 acres is the zoo and there's all sorts of like nooks and crannies and islands at one end and then a, a large area of open water at the at the other end of the lake. And uh, Bones and I kind of, well, we had two areas that we wanted to wanted to have a go at and as it happens we got one of those areas out the draw so we was in 17 and 18 which a big open swim loads of open water and we kind of thought that towards the latter end of the week would be where we would start to pick up bites or so that's what we expected but the uh, the weather had other ideas unfortunately so Bones and I set up in swim 17 and 18 and uh, yeah we did our homework, had a look at the lake, had a look at what we had and what features there were and how we thought the fish might be moving in and out of our swims. Bones had a really big bar that runs across the front of his swim so he investigated that and I had a plateau in the front of my swim but um, there's a like a marginal area to my left hand side that initially I hadn't bothered looking at but um, I seen a fish roll there on the on the evening of the first night so I started putting a rod down there uh, unfortunately my first bite off that spot I lost that fish um, but these things happen so I, I put that rod back out on there and I think it was the second evening I had a really nice um, 35 36 pound common off that spot so that was kind of like the start for us and I think Bonesy had one at some point in the early part of the week and then the temperatures plummeted, I mean, you know, proper frost, everything was iced over. It was minus two, minus three on the on the nights and, uh, the you know, the whole lake just wasn't producing fish. There was just odd bites here and there, but me and Bones did not see a lot. And uh, it was probably the Wednesday or Thursday when it started to pick up again for us and we started to get a couple of bites. So, yeah, it was a bit of a, a certainly a tough first part of the week. So by the Wednesday afternoon, you know, it was clear that there wasn't like a large group of fish in front of us. So uh, I grabbed my Polaroids and uh, a GoPro and I went for a little wander. I went to the other side of the lake where I said all those little islands were and there was a little clearing in the trees on one of the swims, swim four if I remember rightly. And uh, yeah, there was, a, there was a group of fish there. In all fairness, there wasn't a lot of big fish there, but uh, there was enough to make me... Uh, make me pick my rods up and have a go for them. In actual fact, I did see a, a mid 50 common down there, but that was the biggest fish. I managed to get a really nice shot of that with my GoPro. So on the Thursday morning, I took some rods down there, a little bit of bait, just basic essentials, alarms, rods, net, and a bit of bait. And uh, yeah, I managed to sneak one out of that little swim, which was really good fun. I really enjoyed that. 
Well, I came into this swim yesterday and uh, seen a couple of fish. There's not a lot of fish down here, but enough to justify putting some bait in and coming back today. So it's a bit of a pain. It's a long old trek. I borrowed a push bike and I've got my rods on my back and a bucket with a few bits in it. And uh, I put some bait in yesterday before I left. Clipped my line up so I knew where I was casting so I didn't disturb them. And uh, yeah, I've had a bite. And the week that we've had on this lake, I am super happy. So on the Friday morning, I kind of planned another trip down there, prepared a little bit better. I took some food and some water so I could spend, you know, most of the day down there. And uh, yeah, it was brilliant fishing. A really, really good afternoon's fishing. The tree line that I was fishing to, if, if I played the fish from the bank, they could kite down the margin into the snag. So basically, if I got a bite, I had to wade out onto this plateau to get the right line angle and, you know, give them full pressure to get them in. And I think I had five bites and I landed four of those fish. So yeah, really, really good fun afternoons fishing i think there was about three thirties i think 32 pound i think was my biggest fish so basically it corresponds with the size of the fish that i'd seen from the gopro but what an amazing afternoon's fishing he's out he's out he's out So this was another one that's tried to sneak me, giving me one bleep and come back down the margin and tried to get into the snags. But fortunately in this swim, I can walk out past this little old well on this plateau. I can get the right angle and he just touched the snags when I give him big side strain and he comes straight out. So that was good. It's not a big fish, but it's another bite. Yeah, it's a 20 pound mirror is this one, but it's a bite. Well, actually I say that, it, it, it looks a little bit bigger than 20 pound. Okay, so I, uh, I got that fish back and uh, reset the rod and I've had another fish very similar. Another scraper 30, but an absolutely beautiful fish. What do you reckon to that? And this one, I've lost a couple of fish this week and you know, you accept it. One or two of them I felt I didn't get the rub of the green. Well this one, give me a single bleep and it's actually kiting down the margin behind a snag. And I watched the line move and then I watched one of the snags move. I thought, this sneaky bugger is trying to do me. So how I got this out this snag is beyond me. But sometimes luck goes your way, doesn't it? So there you go, what a stunning fish. So yeah, another, another bite out of this little bay that I've been fishing. Really glad I came down today. That's three bites I've had out of here today. A couple of 30 pound mirrors and this upper 20 mirror. So none of the big fish of course, but I've really enjoyed fishing down here. It's my type of swim, the type of fishing I really like to do. Uh, just flicking bags about and yeah, just watching for bubbles and seeing where the fish are and trying to work out what they're doing. And uh, yeah, it's been really good to me. So happy days and I've got about another hour before I need to get back to the rod so we'll get it popped back out and uh, see if we can nick another one before we go but yeah what a brilliant day's fishing this is the 
biggest fish of the day. So this is just over 32 pound. So I'm real happy, really good days fishing. Just brought me rods, little bucket, few bits and bobs. And yeah, I've managed to nick four fish on the last day. So happy with that. We'll get this fish back. So I made my way back up to base camp after having a few fish out that little island swim and uh, yeah Bonesy had had one that afternoon and I think the owner was in his swim and helped him land in the fish and done a few pictures for him and uh, yeah we had our final evening meal at the zoo which is you know you never want to go home from a from a French trip it's always bad the last day isn't it but you know the lake gave us a little bit of a leaving present we had a fish each on the last night you know again it was really unfortunate with the fish weights we didn't manage to get through to the bigger fish because there's plenty of big ones in the zoo but other than that brilliant weeks fishing thoroughly enjoyed ourselves and uh, yeah we packed down and made our way back up to the ferry that was my first French trip of the year yeah really good week and uh, you actually joined me down here on my syndicate which is in actual fact somewhere I barely fished last year I think I did three nights on this lake last year which is not like me but I was just too busy doing my other like filming stuff and going away doing my holidays my French fishing and all the other bits and bobs that kind of like suck the year up so yeah I'm, I'm really pleased to have got back down here um, there's only one other member on which I'm really surprised about I thought it was going to be uh, a little bit busier than this and uh, the sun's just blinding me as it's going behind the tree so it's about half past seven at the moment and uh, traps are set so we'll uh, we'll see what happens tonight maybe we can nick one uh, before I go back to work in the morning but we got back from France and it was uh, straight back in, into work as it always is when you get back from a France trip and myself and some of the DNA guys went to a place called Esne's Quarry somewhere we'd never filmed before it was a cold one it was a cold easterly wind and it was a bit of a tough film so here's a few bits of footage from that film shoot Are you good? good? Are you good? Out? No. <laughs> Kept it long just for you. <laughs> when, when I walk down into the swim here, I see a good one out in front here. And I've just seen one just out here as well, so they're in between these two. Nice. Not yeah. easy. Yeah. But this wind is horrible and it's staying like this for the rest of the week. East, north, east of these. Not the one. <laughs> it's out of my head. That's what I think about it. Look at that. Look like you're an easy rider. Do, don't I? Get your motor running. <laughs> Get on the highway. <laughs> There's Ollie. Say hello, Ollie. Hey, babes. <laughs> Ollie's in a bit of a flyer here. So we've had a look out in this swim. I'll show you the swim. What am I doing? There you go. There you go. So we had a look in this swim. Uh, well, on this area of the lake this morning when we got here, I was here at half past seven and uh, it was just showing everywhere. So obviously this little island, I don't know if you can see that, but we're actually on a little island there. So this little island is the obvious place to go. So that's where we are now. We'll film the boys uh, up in the boxes, like I say. We've got them setting up in the swims and they are just about ready to put the rods out. You can see Ollie behind me there, he's uh, putting some zigs on because it's 32 foot out there. So. That's the state of play so far, and all, I, all I've been doing is setting up the GoPros. There's one there, and I'll just spin you around. And another one there. I'm just putting the GoPros on the rod, so obviously when they get a bite, we can uh, film the bite, get the boys in the action. So that's the state of play. Yeah, you're in. Yeah, you're in. Well, that certainly didn't take long. I was just about to start plumbing the depth down from the surface on my other zig float and um, literally had the other rod in my hand or the line in my hand and then this one's let out a bleep and then it's just about to start ripping. So yeah I just picked two zones to sort of straight out in front. Um, again I haven't done any leading around and I just went this one was straight mid water 14 foot down 
from the top. Um, and when I felt the lead down, I've got no idea how deep it is, to be honest. Um, but we're in, literally 20 minutes worth of fishing. So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with this one. And hopefully we can get off the mark straight away. Go on, in you get. There we go, we're off the mark. Happy days. Looks like a nice scaly one. I'll tell you what, it's not fun playing it in that strong wind. But who cares, it's in the net. Brilliant, great stuff. Go, boy. Right, good morning from the uh, Esne shoot. Yeah, cold easterly wind at the moment, guys, unfortunately. Uh, but the boys have had a couple of fish. Ollie, you've had what you had, Ollie? I've had a couple doubles. Nice. We haven't uh, found the bigger ones. There's been one or two decent shows out here. We've seen a lot this morning, but a lot of them are the stockies. So uh, we're kind of hoping that some of the originals are kicking around and we can pick one of them up today. But it's, like I say, it's a really cold easterly wind and it's not fun to be sat on it, but we are in front of what looks to be the bulk of the fish. So hopefully today we'll, um, We'll get a decent bite, get a decent fish for the film. Right, so we've had a few liners and that um, early part of this morning, but so far, geese, so far, no more fish, but uh, they're here, we are on them, but we're just doing a bit of a morning update. Okay, so as you can see, the boys behind me are doing the morning update, so I'm just coming down here to stay away from the microphones. But yeah, they're both working the swim hard, or their swim's hard, but it's, uh, it's frustrating shoots like this because you want to get cracking, you want to fish, you want to like make really good film, but if the fish ain't playing, the fish ain't playing, there's just something, sometimes nothing you can do about it, like I say. Really hard, but we're kind of hopeful that we're going to get another couple of bites and we can scrape a film together with the footage that we've got. So that's a step play on this shoot. Okay, so while we're on this shoot, um, one of the DNA directors, Steve Carey, and Welsh legend Nick Davis has come down to see us to do a bit of fishing while we're down here. So uh, I'm just taking a little walk away from where we're fishing. I'm going to go into their swim. I'm going to ping them a question about DNA. Uh, let's see what answers they come up with. So two DNA products for the rest of my angling career. Hook bait and any other product. Hook bait, without a doubt, milky malts. My favourite, favourite hook bait out of them all. I think uh, as an understated flora, they work all year round and I just think they go with my choice of bait, which has always been SLK and now the bug. They just go perfectly. And I think if I was to choose another product for my style of angling, it would definitely be boilies. And at the moment in time, it would be bug 100%. I think we've just advanced on all our boiler range to get there. Nick? Mm, I think for me, I'd probably go for the bug half tones. So at least have a mix of color in my pot. Um, like I'm a big lover of the milky malt as That's well. It's a good way of edging your bets that, isn't it? It is, uh? yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, to be fair. And I, I, th I think at this present moment in time, it, you'd, it'd have to be the bug for me because the results have just been absolutely fantastic from it. Yeah, definitely.
So it's looking unlikely that we're going to get a film out of this shoot because we're going today. Um, yeah, it's frustrating because we put a lot of effort into, you know, you obviously you guys watch these angling films and some brilliant angling films out there, not just from DNA, you know, there's some really, really good stuff, but what you don't see is what we go through to create those films because sometimes we put all the effort into a shoot, getting the anglers here, getting the camera team here, and uh, the fish don't play and it's been, it's been really cold here, you know, we are into like, the latter parts of April, but we've had this horrible easterly breeze blowing into our faces for the entire shield. But we're here, we're in this area because there is fish here, but they're just sat in the upper layers and the boys have been chasing them around with zigs. We've caught a couple of smaller ones, but it's not really uh, not really the one. So it's a bit gloomy on set at the moment, I must say, because uh, there are some nice fish in here, but we just they're just not having it. And when they're not, we, we, we're not magicians. We can't, we can't make things happen. <laughs> We do our very best and the boys have tried really hard, but the reality of making carp films is sometimes you have to go go away empty handed and unless something magical happens uh, in between now and 11 o'clock when we uh, start packing the bivvies down, it's looking like this one's not gonna be a goer. So they're still gonna try, they'll still try this morning. If they see anything, sure, they'll put rigs on them, but unfortunately, I think this one's not gonna be available for you guys to see because it's uh, yeah it's just been tough but we'll see what the morning does and uh, we'll see what happens so we are out filming again today um, yeah, brand new venue for me to film at, although I have been here before. We are on Air One Pits, which is one of the jewel of the north. Yeah, I like this place. Um, there we are, there is the big pit. This is pit six that we're fishing today. And yeah, like I say, I do really like this place. It's not really manicured swims and shorts and graveled and all the rest of it. It's a bit wild, bit open, big pit fishing, and we are with one of my pals, Danny, who is a new member of DNA, who is a bit of a big pit master. Hi guys. So we was in the swim a little bit further that way yesterday, we fished the night there, and then we seen a lot of fish in front of this swim this morning. So Danny's up staked, moved down here, 35 wraps onto the spot. Bit difficult in this wind, because wind's blowing at us, so he's, he's worked really hard today to get the rods out. Right hand rod went, what happened? It dropped back off the bar. I've had, I've had it before in here. So there's a bar up there that I'm fishing on top of it. And the fish will pick you up. Because you're fishing a tight line, the instant reaction is to come back at you. And before you, as you come back, there's probably 10 yards and then it's solid weed. I think it's just dived under the weed. Yeah. Pick the rod up, playing the fish, and all of a sudden we've had an up pull. So, but yeah. positive that we've had it's a bite. straight away, like say we'd only yeah. been in the swim Yeah, we've not been here long, so there's, uh, there's every chance that one of these rods is going to go tonight or even this afternoon maybe. We'll get a bite for the cameras and we'll get a film out of it. But I think, I hope you get a bite, mate, because you've worked hard, haven't you? Yeah. You deserve a fish. And, uh, yeah, it'd be nice. It's not an easy lake to fish as this one. It's 50 acres and it's distance work. And it's not just the, the ability to cast a lead long, it's being accurate and hitting the spots. And that's what we're trying to do with this film. You know, it's not just uh, it's not just about willing as lead as far as you can because you're not fishing singles, you're fishing over bait. Yeah. So yeah, but uh, so that's the state of play. We need a fish, which is quite normal when we're on these film shoots. We always need a fish, but uh, that's how it is. That's the game we play. So we'll uh, we'll keep you posted what happens this afternoon and uh, through the night. Take you down. What was we saying? He lost that fish a minute ago. And there he goes. Got what do you reckon it is that big 20? Yeah, probably for 20, I reckon. Yeah, all for 20. So that's uh that's what graft does for you. I've got to say, you know, I'm filming Dan. Started off down there, put a lot of bait out, they didn't move onto his bait. He didn't just sit on his backside and stay there and think, oh well, they might move, they might move. 
seen fish here. He's come down here, he's spotted 36 wraps into the wind, worked his socks off, and that's what happens. See it all the time, that's what happens. Give us a cheesy smile, boy! <laughs> nice. Yeah, so I am so glad that Danny had that fish because uh, he's not been on film before and, uh, you know, we've all been there when we've not done this type of thing and he was like, you know, a little bit nervous on the camera but he's got better and better as the little session's gone on and uh, he so much wanted a fish because he does really well on here. I think he's on 20 fish already and for a lake like this, that's pretty good going. So yeah, effort plays off, that's what they say and that's certainly true on this one. And uh, yeah, I hope he gets another one as well because uh, he's really worked hard on this uh, session and it's been uh, fun to film him. So yeah, happy days. Really enjoyed it down on Air One Pits. I've not been down here for about three or four years. Um, yeah, the new guys seem to be uh, doing a good job with the place, looking really smart, they're tidying it up, and uh, yeah, it's been a really good, enjoyable 48 hours and a uh, bit of a weekend relax for me. Spent some time with the missus, and it's on to Orchid Lake next week. So I'm away with Mozen Bart on Orchid, a place I've never been to before, and obviously it's got a lot of history, so I'm looking forward to going down there. But for now, I'm going to get on the road, get myself home, get some rest and recharge myself for the next one. Okay, so I've just landed at Orchid Lakes, which is a venue I have never been to before. Um, we are shooting a little session with Moz and Bart. They're already here, they got here yesterday. Apparently they have had a couple of fish, so it's, uh, it's going good. So I am uh, loading the barrow with my camera equipment and I'm uh, shooting around there and finishing the film off with them. So we'll see how they're getting on, we'll go down into the swim. nod so i've just landed at the lake guys and as you can see the bart man had one ready for its pictures tail up and touch so the boy's just going to get some snaps of this fish i'm moving a little bit because it's a really really nice fish is this guys look at that proper orchid stunner is it 27 pound yeah 27 pounder. Nice ease. Nice Not a bad start at all. That's sick pigs. Yeah. Yeah, proper. Yeah. Oh, much. What are we going to be talking about, Bart? It is. Beer. Beer. I'm going to sit here and talk about my beer. Beer? What are you using anyway? Maxi mix, Maxi mix, Maxi mix, Mighty mix. You say he was on SLK? Bug. Oh, I am bug. Bug. Bug, bug, bug. It's got the bug. Look, some of them have souped in a bit of bug food liquid. Look, they've okay. got all juicy. Yeah, nice. Okay, so a real rarity for me is to do a little bit of fishing while I'm filming the boys. I actually haven't brought any tackle, I've just brought my camera. But behind where the boys are fishing on this orchid shoot, there's a little what they call the cat lake. It's only a small lake. Um, but as you can see, there's one or two carp in it. 
and me and Bart threw, threw a few beat stim pellets at them earlier on today and uh, they started coming up from down in this little corner so uh, yeah I've come down and I've had one there is like a real light coloured common that I had my eye on and he very nearly took the bait but some geese uh, came in and spoiled it so I've had this little fella and uh, yeah just breaking up the afternoon there's not much going on behind the rod we're waiting for the night for the uh, for the guys to catch the big fish out the main lake so yeah real uh, rarity for me to do this but yeah I've enjoyed it all the same <laughs> can't do any more for you Right, I've just walked out of the swim a little bit so I don't disturb, I don't know if you can see but Bart has walked down to like a little canal section on the end of the lake, a little stalking area. Now he's been baiting it um, since they got here, he had a fish off the spot yesterday and he popped by about two hours ago, he said he'd seen a fish there, dropped a little bit more bait and then he's come back down now, I've followed him down with the camera and he's just whispered to me that there's some big ones there and they're tearing it up. Now, even from where my camera's positioned, I can see the plumes of fizz coming up. So he said they're big fish as well, which would be really good. So uh, yeah, so the camera's rolling, it's on him and I'm staying back here. So I can't spook anything. So yeah, really exciting stuff for this because uh, I think he's pretty confident he can hook one of these fish. And that fizzing that I've seen coming off that spot tells me that uh, I think he's right, so we'll see what happens. Yes, mate, yes, mate, yes, mate. So we're uh, back at base camp now. He's put some more baiting down there, so he's gonna have a go um, later on this evening, see if it starts fizzing up again. And uh, yeah, but he's looking a bit moody out there in the main lake. Looks good for a big one out there to me. You're ruining me time lapse. Oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> I'm ruining well, Moz's time it. lapse. <laughs> yeah, I've got to put it together, so it doesn't matter. There's the boys. Oh. Say hello. <laughs> I knew he was gonna do that. So yeah, that's the state of play at the moment. So we're just um bit more content. So Moz has got his rods out. Bart's got his rods to do because obviously he's been down there. Yeah. So we're gonna film Bart getting his rods out and uh, we'll see what tonight does for us. Nice. Yeah, why well, see that one? Right, so good morning from Orchid Lakes. Yeah, quiet night for the boys last night. Um, nothing happened. Uh, Moz is up. Bart's still asleep, that's why I've come down here. Yeah, but it is looking good this morning. I don't know if you can see, there's a real mist going across the lake and uh, I was stood with Moz a minute ago and one boshed right on his spot. So we're uh, really hopeful for a morning bite. It looks really good for it, you know. I'm surprised they didn't get a bite last night, actually, but there you go. But yeah, hopefully uh, one of them will pick a fish up this morning because we're going today. So it's really nice if we can end the film on a fish. That would be a real nice one and get a big one. But to be fair, that stalking spot where Bart had that fish yesterday, I think he's going to go down and uh, drop a bit of bait in there this morning and maybe have a go from on the way out. So. However they do it, a bite would be nice, but they've got a nice little film here, they've had some nice fish, but one of the bigger ones would be a really nice ending, but we'll see what the morning does. Oh, go on.
Okay, so the boys are just waiting to see if their main rods in the main lake do something and uh, while I was uh, filming the shows in that lake I seen a few cruising around on this little lake behind me so fired a few beta stim floaters at them and uh, yeah caught another little common very similar fish to what I caught yesterday but yeah it's uh, yeah just breaking the monotony of uh, waiting for their main rods in the uh, big fish lake to do something so yeah nice start to the morning Right, so we've seen them fish showing over Mozza's area and I was just putting that little one back out of this back lake and look what's happened! Morning, morning! Morning, morning! Oh, hello. hello. Does it look like a good fish? I haven't even looked at him yet. Um, mid-20, I think. Let's go and have a look. Might be a bit bigger. Yeah. Might be a bit bigger. Oops. He's nearly in. Nearly? What are you saying, Bart? Not a lot. <laughs> are you awake? <laughs> I'm alright. I'm alright, mate. Well, we've been seeing a few out there, so uh, mm. I reckon there's a decent chance of another bite this morning. Barbling. Yeah. <laughs> right, we'll film this fish. Oh. Hey. No sooner have we landed one on the right, the left one's gone now. Oh, that looks a big carp, I think, that. Whammy, you. You've been hey. What's going on, Mars? We're having it off. We're having it off. I'm going to do my Essex impression. You ready? Go on. Oh, God, this will be good. Go on. Double babbo. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, good skills. Love it. Love that means it. I've got a lot of work to do. It does. Fortunately, <laughs> Vincent. Moz, do you do tutorials? Yeah, yeah. Bart, have you got any money on you? D charge you double for all <laughs> this, yeah, son. Yeah. Carry on. Carry on. Carry on. But we, we've just been having a conversation about hook baits because I told Bart to put a certain hook bait on yesterday and he's like, I have, I have. So we'll put a PB dumbbell on. Well, I put a PB on. Yeah, 10 mil and probably trimmed it down. No, me. <laughs> what have you put a snowman out there? What, a, an 8mm bug with a 10mm trimmed PB on top of it? Oh, it's 10mm, yeah. <laughs> See, I told you it'd be that. <laughs>
so Bart's left hand has just gone this morning with a lovely 26 so we had carnage in the Moz swim and now we're getting a bit of carnage in Bart's swim it picked up his middle rod so he's going to do all three rods again because uh, it does look like there's another bite in this swim or even in Moz's swim as well the fish have obviously pushed down this side of the lake so we're going to hang around for another couple of hours and see if we can catch one of the big ones out of here but yeah really productive morning but we're going to hang around see if we can get another one around there try hard <laughs> well Moz if you want to catch PBs yeah you've got to go around the other side right like well, that is it so we're going back on the cat lake because oh. I had to go around the other side while them two were zedding and I've had my cat lake PB it looks a nice mirror actually so Cat Lake PB. <laughs> so Moses grabbed that, the camera. Is that what you do with every pond you go to? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. PB. Vinny has a new PB every bloody week. Yeah, and my first mirror as well. That counts as well. Oh right, first ever mirror from yeah. the Cat Lake again. <laughs> from yeah. the Cat Lake. Cat Lake PB mirror actually. <laughs> <laughs> So I, uh, I got Bart's stalking rod back out again, few, threw a few beta stim pellets back into this lake behind us and uh, yeah, I've had my PB mirror from the Cat Lake. So yeah, what a lovely little fish and you know, it's, um, you know we all want to catch big carp, of course we do, but uh, I've really enjoyed having a couple of fish on this trip. It's not very often, like I said before, that I get the chance to uh, do a bit of fishing while we're filming. So yeah, I'll take that. So good morning from Stables Carp Fishery. Um, yeah, it's a special morning as well because it's my birthday today. And uh, we've come up to the lake. This is a lake that myself and a couple of friends own and run. And uh, yeah, we've come up to celebrate my birthday. So uh, I'm not feeling my best because we had a bit of a barbecue and a couple of beers last night. And uh, yeah, it's a big birthday as well. You don't want to know. Um, I'll show you the lake. There it is. It's a really nice little three acre members lake. So yeah, we came down yesterday, tea time, we've just done a night and uh, I think Dan had a 20 out of here, Ian had a really nice 22 and uh, I think Clive had a upper double and uh, yeah, I've just had a birthday fish, my rods went about half an hour ago. So we'll go and have a look at that fish, it's not, it's not one of the big ones, it's one of the stockies but it's a nice little common. So what else has been happening? Oh yeah, the uh, orchid shoot, yeah. Went really well, the boys did good. We had some really nice fish from there, but uh, you'll have to wait till that film's edited before you see uh, the bigger ones that they caught. So we're just going down into my swim. Here it is. Bit of a mess as always when I've got my camera equipment with me. It doesn't all fit in the bivvy sometimes, but yeah, there's stables. Lovely little lake. Don't want to know how many hours I've put in working down here, but it's all good, it's all fun and the members love it. Like I say, very rare that I get the opportunity to fish it because there's normally people here. Get this one weird, see what it is. It's one of the stocky commons, so that's that's good. They're growing really well. We did lose a few fish in here. Last year, I think it was. Don't know, I'm trying to forget it if I'm honestly. Yeah, last year it was. So the new fish are going, uh, going really well, putting some weight on. And uh, we'll get packed up and get back to work. Well, I've got him out onto the mat. And he isn't a stocky, he's an original. Definitely one of the originals. Real red tinge in the tail and really dark coloured fish. So this is probably a fish that's grown on in the lake because most of the original originals are uh, much bigger than this one. So this has probably grown on in the lake. They are stunning, these commons. They don't grow particularly big. We've had them to 28, but they are lovely fish. Yeah, and I think this one spawned on in the lake because we've not put any commons in like this. Yeah. Okay, so I've popped that fish back. Now it's time to pack the gear down, load the van, get myself back off to work. 
So that's a wrap on part one of this brand new series from DNA. I hope you've enjoyed it. You know, we've been to a variety of different venues with different anglers, and I hope I've given you a little bit of an insight into what goes into the making of the angling films that we all love to watch.